everybody, welcome back to this episode of Coffin Analytics. Voting season is upon us, so it's time for the voters to select who they'd like to represent them for the next two, four, or six years. Here in Illinois, the primary election is on June 28th, but voting starts about six weeks before that. With a month and a half to do it, there's plenty of time to get to the polls. But during early voting, there's often multiple places for a voter to cast their ballot. And each polling place may have different days and hours when a voter can vote. It can sometimes be confusing to know where to get this information about early voting unless you know where to look. Your county clerk's website is always a great place to start. But in true tech geek fashion, I wanted to go a step further. I wanted to build a very simple app that will text me the early voting calendar if I send a text message to it saying vote. So that's what we're going to build today. A simple chatbot that will send out the early voting calendar via text message if someone sends it a text message that says vote. And all you need for this little project is a Twilio account and about five lines of code. This should take you no more than five to ten minutes from start to finish. So let's dive in, shall we? First, go to www.twilio.com and sign up for an account if you do not already have one. Once you signed up for an account, when you're on the console homepage, you should see a section called phone numbers. Click on that and that will drop down into the manage. And in manage, you're gonna want to click on buy a number. Filtering by area codes brings me a list of numbers that are in my area. I'm gonna go ahead and select the first one here. Selecting this first number uh, gives me a list of the capabilities for this phone number, voice, fax, SMS, and MMS. MMS in our case right here is the one that we want to focus on because ultimately we're going to be sending an image and that's what MMS allows us to do. Then this is going to provision that phone number for us, so it'll take a few seconds. Now that this number is provisioned for us and is specific to our Twilio account here, we can go ahead and click on configure. We don't actually need to do this right now because we're going to come back to this piece in a minute, but right now I want to go over and build our function that will tell Twilio how to handle incoming messages. If we scroll down to where we are right now and buy a number, we should see a piece called functions and assets. So underneath that, if you expand it, uh, the functions classic, you should see something called assets classic. So go ahead and click on assets classic. This brings up a list of all of the assets that we have out there for our account. So what's an asset? An asset is just a static file that you can use. Uh, plain and simple, there's nothing more to it than that. So what we need to do is create an asset out of our early voting calendar. So what I've done here is I've gone to the county clerk's website. I've pulled this up. I'm going to save this down onto my desktop locally as a file, and then I'll upload that into Twilio to make it an asset. Back in Twilio here, I'm just going to click on this plus sign. And when I click on this, we will add a new asset. It's going to pull this up for me. I will select this. I'll click upload here. This will deploy. It's taking that PDF file that we are uploading, doing a lot of backend magic, but then it's also assigning it a URL. That URL then becomes a, a link that we can call in our function that we're about to build. All right, that's now fully deployed. Now we just need to copy our path here. And we're gonna use this path, this URL, in our function. So let's do that next piece. Let's go build our function. Once we're in our classic functions list, we're gonna look for this blue plus sign, and we're gonna click on this. This gives you a whole lot of templates for different functions here. We're gonna go ahead and create this uh, blank. So click on blank, and then click on create. Anytime you create a blank function from scratch, it's gonna give you a little bit of boilerplate code right here. Um, any function needs to start out with this uh, exports.handler, and then you need to define your function, and you need to pass in three arguments here, your context, your event, and your callback. And then it's provided helpfully uh, to let twimmel equal new twilio.twimmel.voice response. We're gonna modify that just a little bit. Um, this is a commented out line of code, and then any function needs to end with this callback, uh, passing in null and, and twimmel. Twimmel being this uh, variable that you've defined up here, which could obviously change depending on your use case. So I'm going to keep that consistent uh, in the way that it is just for ease of, of use today, and ease of explanation. Since the point of our little um, simple chatbot here is to respond to an incoming text message with the primary calendar that we've set up in our assets folder, I'm going to go ahead and call this um, primary 
calendar 2022. And then I'm gonna call this 2022 primary calendar. Pretty straightforward. Uh, this is our custom pathway, and this will give us a helpful, friendly name that we can easily recognize this if we wanna work with it later or change it around later. Okay, leave this box checked for uh, valid Twilio signature. So let's go down and get into the fun stuff. Let's get into writing some code. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna get rid of this commented outline of code because it's not doing anything for us. And then I'm gonna give us a little bit of room here to write our code. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is change this from uh, twilio.twimmel.voice response to twilio.twimmel.messaging response. Now I wanna tell my function what to do with the outgoing body of the text message. So for that, I'm gonna type const, we'll just call it body equals event as b body mark event dot body dot lowercase and then what this is gonna do is the body of the text message, no matter what the incoming inbound message says, it is going to assume it is a, a lowercase. So for example, if someone were to type lowercase V O capital T lowercase E for whatever reason, or maybe they did it on an accident, it will change everything to lowercase. Um, so that way we can have a uniform way in which we handle the incoming text message. Hope that makes sense. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that very well, but all right. Next, we're gonna do switch body and then here is where we handle our case statements. So in the case where someone texts vote, we need to handle how we are going to respond to the word, the incoming word vote. Twimmel dot message. And then here is where we will put the URL to the asset that we have just created. I'm gonna type out this code real quick and then I'm gonna to go to my assets, copy that uh, URL to the asset and then I'm gonna paste that there. But I don't wanna lose what I've done here so far. Break. And what I'm doing here on the second line is a lot of times when people type a word, they are so used to typing text messages that they'll automatically hit space. And that can be confusing to our uh, function here. So I'm adding a second case where uh, I've typed out the word vote and then a space afterwards in contrast to this first one where it's simply V-O-T-E, this is V-O-T-E space. I see a lot of times where people will add an extra space on the end. So I'm trying to handle that scenario with the second case. And again, this is going to be the location of our URL to our asset that we created a few minutes ago. The asset being the actual calendar itself saved in a static file. That's it, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna save. I w went down here and click save. And our function is now deploying. Assuming that you have a correct code with no syntax errors or no issues or anything like that, then your, um, you'll get a message saying your function has been successfully deployed which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna go back to my assets, 
classic here, and I'm going to copy URL. And I'm going to go back to my functions again. I'm going to go back to the function that we just wrote. And I'm going to paste that right here in both instances. Now I'm going to save my function again. And it tells me my function is now deploying, and you, your function is successfully deployed as soon as that uh, takes place. There it is. Your function has been successfully deployed. Now what we need to do is assign this function to the phone number that we bought earlier. And we've called this our primary calendar 2022. So let's go up to our phone numbers. And when we go into our phone numbers, we're going to click on manage and then active numbers. And what I mentioned earlier, here is where we can define how we want our phone number to react. So I'm going to click this phone number that I set up here earlier. So this is our early voting number. I'm going to click on this and make this a little bit smaller here. All right, I made this a little bit easier to read. So here we are in the number, uh, the active numbers that we bought a little bit earlier. This is our, our phone number. And I'm going to go down, scroll down a bit. And here is where you can handle uh, what you'd like the phone number to do if an incoming voice or fax call comes in. Scrolling down a little bit further, we get to our messaging section. So we can choose a messaging service, we can configure with other handlers, there's a, there's a whole lot of flexibility with what you can do with Twilio. It's really cool. But I'm going to change this to make sure that it says when a message comes in, I want it to trigger a function. And then the function path is going to be that custom function path that we defined just a few seconds ago. And then after that, I'm just going to click on save and it says our number was successfully updated. So we have built everything in the back end that we need now. The only thing to do is to send a text message and try it out. So let's see if it works. Okay, so I've got my cell phone face up on the screen here and I'm going to send a text message to the number that I bought earlier. And I'm just going to type vote, which is the keyword that will trigger the function to respond with our primary calendar. Hit send. And that replied with the uh, general election primary calendar. Cool. So this worked. Anytime in Kendall County, when someone would like to receive the general election calendar texted right to their phone, they will simply send the word vote or text the word vote to this number. Straightforward. Anywhere in the country, if you simply have the calendar and a couple dollars to spend, you can create this yourself anywhere you like. And this will help let people know when and where they can vote. And this will, you know, help contribute to bringing voters out to the polls. I'd also note that we wrote the code, if you remember, we put two case statements in there, uh, vote and then vote with a space on the end because a lot of times when people type, they type so fast, they'll type the word and then they'll hit space and then they can hit send. And so even if we have a space on the end of our word vote here, it will still respond with the, uh, with the calendar. It will still trigger that function. Um, and if we test or we send any other word whatsoever, like test, it will not respond because it is looking, that function is looking for that keyword vote in order to execute. So we can send hi or hello, and these words will not trigger that function to respond. So to recap, what have we done here? We've bought a phone number. We have added our calendar as an asset, as a static file in Twilio. We've written our function that will call that asset. And then we've set our phone number that we bought to call to trigger that function based on some keyword. So those are the elements. That's how they work together and anyone can do this. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns, I'd love to hear them. Please drop a question in the chat below and I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you so much for watching today. Do me a favor, like this video and subscribe to this channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. And drop any comments below if you have any and I will do my best to answer them. One more thing before I go. I'm really trying to get this channel to 10,000 subscribers. So I need your help. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give away a PlayStation 5. So I'm gonna give away this PlayStation 5 right here. It is brand new, it is unopened. 
if I can get to this channel to 10,000 subscribers, then I will pick one subscriber at random and I will send you a PS5. So what you can do is help me get there. You can help grow this channel. So like, subscribe, and then share the channel. If we can get to 10,000 subscribers by June 30th, one full month, then I will give somebody, one lucky winner, a PlayStation 5. Sound good? Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody.